Okay, I noticed something about Mikates. Of course, Mikates, this is from the Lubavitch Rebbe. Here we go. The mitzvah, actually, this is going to be about Hanukkah. The mitzvah of Nir Hanukkah is upgetelt in all the mitzvahs in two Sachen. The mitzvah of Hanukkah is extraordinary and it's different than all other mitzvahs in two aspects, in two areas. First of all, in all the mitzvahs of Prandar came from their mitzvah Ketikuna. Every mitzvah, you have the mitzvah the way it's done in, in its proper way. For example, shofar. You take a shofar and you blow it. It's, there's a lot of different laws of how to blow it. When they're hidden from the when they're hidden from the mitzvah, then you could do the mitzvah in a hiddedical way, in a beautified manner. As Zabnit can hid them in a hider, but you'll never find in any mitzvah, in any other mitzvah, where you it's, it's a hider within a hider, beautified within beautification. You, you don't you don't find such a thing by any other mitzvah. Arrive them is from them was the Gemara zakt. And the, the Rebbe brings a proof from what the Gemara says. Hider mitzvah ad kama. The Gemara asks a question. Uh, uh, until what point do you have to beautify the mitzvah? Ad shlish. The Gemara says until a third. It means like three times of uh, of the standard. Of the of the three times the the status quo. Then says the Gemara. This is in Baba Kama, tractic Baba Kama, nine B. As bish ashlish is mishalei. Till a third is from your own. From the from the if you, if you do more than a third. That you're going into uh, God's territory. So you see from that Gemara, a person could uh, beautify a mitzvah with, without really any uh, lim limitations. And this is all within the, the realm of beautifying the mitzvah. Hanukkah, however, not only don't not only do we have, of course, the, the mitzvah itself. Nitna the hider from the mitzvah. Not only is there the option to beautify the mitzvah, to go beyond the letter of the law, but mahadrin mina mahadrin. Here by Hanukkah, you're beautifying it within beautification. So that's the first uh, idea where we see how Hanukkah, and especially the the mitzvah kindling the menorah, sticks out more. So it sticks out in the, in this area. More than any uh, any other mitzvah, and that is by kindling the menorah. It is only there where we find this concept of that that we beautify the mitzvah within beautification. We don't find that at, by any other mitzvah. The second area is in all mitzvahs. I know you didn't kind of the mitzvah lane. In all other mitzvahs, the majority of the Jewish people fulfilled the just the mitzvah itself. Or in the mitzvah from the Hanukkah is the minig by all the yidden some kinds and it's not the mitzvah alone on the echter hider. By uh, Hanukkah, it's something uh, amazing that all Jews, and this is no no matter what what label you uh, a, a Jew might lab, label himself, across the board every Jew by Hanukkah is doing not just just the bare minimum, the bare bones of the mitzvah, but it's the but the Every, or you could say the, the majority of, of the Jewish people are doing the, the beautification of the mitzvah. Not only that, but uh, many Jews are doing even the beautification within the, the, the beautification. And just to explain this a bit, because uh, the bare minimum of the mitzvah is that you just have to light one candle every night. That's like the bare bones of the mitzvah of uh, Hanukkah, of kindling the menorah. Then if you, if you want to uh, be beautify it even more, so everybody in the house lights just one candle every night. If you want to do it, beautification, within beautification, that's how we, we, we all do it today, that everybody in the household 
has their own menorah and each night they're increasing the, the amount of candles so we, this is only by Hanukkah that we find where uh, everybody across the board is, is going is taking it to the high road and going beyond beyond the, the letter of, of the law you don't find this by by any other mitzvah for example uh, matzah on, on Pesach so there's a lot of Jews that, that just go uh, by the the bare basics of the mitzvah which is just to go out there and buy the those square mi machine matzahs but only a, a select few go out and buy the the round handmade matzah which is, which is in the category of hither going beyond the, the letter of the law by Hanukkah it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole different story. Everybody across the board is beautifying it within beautification by lighting their own menorah and increasing the candles each night. In Hanukkah's Ein Ferenc Vey Nisim. Now let's look at the two miracles that happen on Hanukkah, and I think he's going to connect the two miracles with these two asterisks. That is, the first miracle was in the of the Milchama. There was a military victory. It is for this part of the of the miracle, the, the military miracle, that the rabbis instituted that we say the halal every day, and the, 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 the thanksgiving to Hashem by saying the prayer of Allah Nisim. Then you have the Nisman Pach Hashem. You have the miracle of the jug of oil that was found. It is, it is for this that uh, the rabbis instituted that we uh, kindle the menorah to uh, commemorate the miracle of the oil. So there's the military and then there's the oil. The Indian is in mitzvah halal Now, this idea of, of uh, beautifying the, the mitzvah. We don't find this in the mitzvah of in the mitzvah of Halal Vahida. This whole idea of uh, beautifying the mitzvah, or actually the beautification within the beautification, you don't find this by this mitzvah of Hanukkah by reciting the Halal prayer and saying the Va'alanisim. It's either you say it or you don't. There's, there's, there's no beautifying of it. Nor in Mrs. Halal Kazneris says, so it is in the miracle of the oil which we commemorate through lighting the menorah it, it, it's there where you have this whole concept of uh, beautifying the mitzvah declaring as Indian hogis so now we're going to highlight this miracle of the oil, how how it's greater than the miracle than than, than the military uh, victory, and it's for this reason that the beautification of the mitzvah we only find in the commemoration of the oil, and we don't find it by the commemoration of the military victory. To understand this and to appreciate this. You first have to understand the way God operates with the world, and they are divided into three categories. The first category is anogativis, the natural, or as people call it, mother nature. That there's a natural way, and the way God operates in the natural way, it, it could be in, in a very extraordinary way and in a successful way. So you could have something in nature which is uh, extraordinary. Take, for example, the eclipse that, that took place back in, uh, I think it was in September 2017. So it's something which is part of nature. It's something amazing and extraordinary, but yet it's within the realm of nature. Second category is anaganisis, miraculous uh, form. This is hechef Teva. This is something which is uh, breaking the boundaries of nature. The military victory 
that took place on Hanukkah, that was something which was beyond the laws of nature. Amnes was a sechav from the time of Avram. As the given given biat chaloshim, Avram biat miat, because as as we say in the prayer, that yeah, the mighties fell in the hands of the weak ones, the many fell in the hands of the of the few. So this is something which breaks the the laws of nature. So if both armies were equally mighty, then you could say, okay, if one wins over the other, it's you, you could call it the success. But it's success within the, the laws of nature. But you, can, but you can't call, call that a miracle. You have two equal armies, and they, they go out to war, and one wins over the other, it's, it's not a miracle. That one wins over the other. This is just uh, any time you have a battle or or a wrestle, you know. So some some somebody has to win. However, you have the the mighty falling in the hands of the weak. That is something which is miraculous. Then you have a third category. Something which is even higher than a miracle. What does that mean? Neither is it connected to uh, something connected to the body. Neither is it connected to the soul. It's in its own category of hither, beautification. So, so uh, finding the jug of oil, this is something connected with the soul. And as it says, that finding this jug of oil, it demonstrated the, the, the close belovedness of the, of the Jewish people in the eyes of Hashem. Because according to Jewish, the official Jewish law, they they had no problem. They could have just went and used the oil that the Greeks defiled, because the according to law that if that's the only oil they had, they could 100% use it. And and yet they insisted that no, we're not we're not going to use it. We're going to try hard and find a drug of uh, pure oil. Or the hutra b'tira, because there's a whole bit, this discussion in Jewish law whether uh, tuma impurity is it something that we we push aside or we permit when you're dealing with the entire con con congregation. So in this case, the entire congregation is dependent on the kindling of, of the menorah. You're in the situation where the Greeks come in and defile the oil, so. Jewish law dictates and says, well, this is the only oil that you have, then go ahead and use it. So, you know, in a way, you could call it the, the, this third category is the unnecessary cat, 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 category. So the first category was nature. It's the regular laws of nature. Then you have beyond the laws of nature, the miracle. And then you have what's called the unnecessary uh, category, something which is even beyond a miracle. Yeshis al and Yanum Shalomai design an unpaying in the Aveda from mention. Now we know that everything that goes on above in the spiritual realm is all dependent on the way we behave here in this world. So there's three behaviors that if we behave in these in this way, divided into three different ways, depending on what way we, we behave, it will have an impact in the upper spiritual realms so you have first of all the Hanaga negatives like, like we said before the physical sorry the the natural way so there's the lack for a better term tit for tat that we study Torah and we perform the mitzvahs and Hashem says, if you do so, if you do A, B, and C, I will give you everything that you need. I will give you a blessing and 
blessings and sustenance and health and everything that 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 you need. Then there is Hanaget Nisus. Then there's a way somebody serves Hashem in a miraculous way. And that is when you go out of your way, you go beyond the, the letter of the law. The person is not just going to go and make a checklist and say, okay, I ate matzah, check. I, I blew, blew the shofar, check. You're not just going to do it in a checklist way. No, that means mahadir in the mitzvah. You're going to go out of your way and beautify the mitzvah. And zuchtas yim mitzvah zayin behider. You're going to search and work hard and really go out of your way to beautify that mitzvah. Dan get the eibush mida connected mida. Then Hashem in return, and this is actually the way God always uh, operates. And that's a tit for that. That if you behave in a certain way, God behaves in return in that same way. So if you go in a natural way, God will respond to you in a, in a, in a natural way. Which is, God says, okay, fine, I will give you everything that, that, that you need. You followed my, my, my instructions, then I will, uh, in return, give you everything that you need. Then you have a Jew that behaves in an extraordinary way. He goes out of his way to beautify the mitzvah. Then Hashem, in return, too, he re reciprocates in an extraordinary way. In a, Supernatural way. Then you have a third behavior, and that is when you uh, nefesh, you give yourself up totally. Not, uh, not God forbid, that the person has to uh, uh, lose, lose his life, but it means that you just put yourself aside. You totally give yourself up to God. Thus, it says, "Not hacher vidin from hider mitzvah." This is even. Uh, higher than just uh, beautifying the mitzvah. And now he's going to go and explain what is this uh, advantage of the third category of Mesiris Nefesh. The man of Mesiris Nefesh of Hidr Mitzvah is Hidr Mitzvah main does tut niti zach weiler muzdas tan. When you, so you, when you beautify the mitzvah, it means that you're not doing it because you have to. And you're obligated. You enjoy what, what you're doing. You understand. You appreciate what God is and what He wants from us, and you're excited about it. And you 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 have a keen interest in it. So so you're not just going to do the bare minimum. You're, you're going to go out of your way and, and and make it even more nicer. So you can you you're gonna go and uh, and work hard and, and make it look nice. Hagam is not even though you're not uh, obligated. An example is somebody that, uh, that 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 really likes their their car or their con convertible. So you, so Sunday afternoon he's he's gonna gonna go out there with the sponges and with the wax and he's gonna really uh, pol polish up his car, even though it's it's not something that one is obligated. It's not like an oil change. That, Oil change is an obligation. If you want your car to operate, you need to do an oil change. But you don't. You're not obligated to go and and polish and wax your car. So why do people wax their car? Because they they are excited about it. They 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 they, they appreciate having a, a nice shiny car. So 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 they go and they and they and they polish it up. The same thing is with the a mitzvah. You could do just the the beer mitzvah. Or you could go and be beautify it because you're excited about it. You uh, you you appreciate what the mitzvah is. Moshe Rabbeinu is gonna connect. Okay, here's he's gonna give a, a, another example. You have a, a slave. So a slave goes and fulfills what the king asks of him. So if you if you're not uh, Interest, really interested in what the king wants you to to do, and you don't really enjoy it. You do it because you have no other choice. You must uh, obey the king. Dan is there, So then you, you're just gonna, like I said before, just a checklist. Okay, I did it. The job is done. Uh, don't don't uh, bother me again. You're not gonna go and. Uh, uh, Try, try to uh, beautify it. Well, the hot king is them. You know, you don't uh, have a geschmack. You don't enjoy it. 
Kagan Ibn Zakh is by him tired on a Hatash Chais in them. If something is, is precious to you and you have an interest in it, Zukta to Mahad is them. So you're going to search and work hard to uh, beautify it. Even then, even when you're going to go out of your way and you really going to, going to put yourself into, into the mitzvah, you are your own self-identity. Which means you have the excitement that you have in the mitzvah, and then you have the, the whom, yeah, you have God, which is uh, the one that wants you to do this mitzvah. So there are two separate entities. There's you, your, your, you and your excitement for the mitzvah, and then there's and then there's God. And the and the the top tier, the, the highest level. This is uh, it's the highest level because you you have no identity of your own. Your whole identity is God, 100%. What is your interest? What is your will? You want to want to do God God's will. You're you're interested that you should be the thinker the, the sayer the doer i'm going to be the one that, that that's doing the mitzvah i'm going to, going to get get up there and show and, and give a nice sermon or a, a lead lead the services it's it's, it's not about you you're interested god wants something to be done i i will i will get get it done whatever it takes so it makes no difference if, 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 if you, you 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 are the one doing it. If some someone else does it. It makes absolutely no difference to you. If some somebody else uh, gets to say, uh, let's say you're you're at a kiddush or some some other bar, bar, bar mitzvah, and somebody else is asked to say a uh, devar Torah, and you feel a little bit in, in, insulted. To how come they didn't ask me? So that means that there's the, the word of Torah, which, which is a beautiful thing, it's a mitzvah, and you're studying Torah, and you're sharing the Torah with, with others. But but yet, there's there's you. You have your per, per personalities and your uh, preferences. You yourself. And then there's uh, the, 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 the will of God. But if your agenda is 100% just to do what, what God wants, so you show up at a bar mitzvah, and somebody doesn't ask you to speak, Okay, well, at least some somebody else is is giving over the speech. And Doctor Avinu says never. So now doing this third uh, tier, which is Mesiras Nefesh, giving yourself up. Berlech to Chavit and Gansen, you put yourself aside totally. Berlech Davik, I feel the Zayin Neshama, even your soul. You 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 put put it aside because it's your soul. Iker is by Imak Haim Zayin the Mitzvah. The main thing is. God wants me to do a mitzvah, I'm doing it. The answer, when you behave in such a way, like we said before, God reciprocates in the, in, in the same form. The Abishter salt up, me the connected, me the God pays back measure for measure. As you know, that God is going to behave in, even in, in a way which is even higher than miracle. Something that, 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 that Far sur surpasses your own psyche. Now, getting getting back to Hanukkah, and with this we're gonna wrap wrap it all up. So in the story of Hanukkah, the Jewish people put their life on the line. They put themselves aside. They put all of their agendas aside, and they were 100% dedicated to Hashem. So this is why God reciprocated and made the miracle of of the of the jug of oil happen. As like we said before, the Talmud says that this is to demonstrate how much to to to, to what degree are the Jewish people cherished in the eyes of Hashem. This is something that has nothing to do with 
our, our own psyche. So like we said before, if you're just going to beautify the mitzvah, so God will reciprocate and just uh, make make it re- reciprocate to us in a miraculous way. But this miracle is going to be connected with the, who you are. We're going to go to the third and most highest tier. That is through self nullification. You put yourself in a side totally. So God will reciprocate in such a way that it's totally non connected, not connected to uh, to your psyche. That uh, the way God behaves to us is not connected with Mitzius, with the uh, existence. Ah, it works both ways. That means if we serve Hashem in a way that we put ourselves aside totally. So we said that God reciprocates back to us in the same form. Here he's saying that sometimes it could work the other way around. That God initiates and uh, behaves with us in a way that's that surpasses everything. And this Awakens within us that we should give 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 give, give ourselves away to- totally to God. And this is something that's within every, every Jew has this top tier of just pu- putting yourself aside totally. And this is even even the the most secular Jew has this built in with 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 within himself this this top tier. Then it's the Nemtin. That there's a certain times, that, as it says in the, in the Tanya, that when a person is put to the test, he, he could be the most non-religious Jew, but there's something that that, that irks him and, and pokes his his soul, and so suddenly his, his soul wakes up and says, "No way, I'm I'm not letting 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 this happen. I'm not, I'm not going to bow down to the idols." By others, it could be their mitzvah that no matter what, this mitzvah has to be done. Which is different when you find this about Torah, the study of Torah and giving charity. I'm not sure what, what, what he means here. Um, the Faris Hanukkah was demoed to give him the Anagar Lamaila if the Haris Kibas and Shal Yisro. So Hanukkah, Hanukkah was a time when, when God behaved with, with, with us in this top tier. And this was to show how much we're we're cherished in the eyes of Hashem. But that's how we need our rich from do from Sirius Nefesh. And the Jewish people awakened this through behaving in a in a Sirius Nefesh stick away, in a self sacrifice way. But this our rich from by Yidden the in from Mahadim Mina Mahadim. So this awakened this whole idea of beautification within beautification. Nitna kima mitzvah kit kitikuna, which means that, as we said before, not only are you doing just just the bare minimum of the of the mitzvah, nit glaze kima mitzvah, not only just to beautify the mitzvah, no mahadim mina mahadim. Here, the status quo of fulfilling the the mitzvah of kindling the menorah is it's mahadim mina mahadim. It's this top tier that you're be it's beautification within beautification. On a veklik and a bittel and gansen. Which, uh, which is in a way a person puts himself aside totally. And this is why by the candles of Hanukkah, it is there specifically where we find it to be uh, quite uh, accepted that we perform the mitzvah of kindling the, the menorah in a beautification within beautification. But this is not by other mitzvahs. As we said before, you don't even find this by any other mitzvah. And across the board, all of the Jewish people have accepted this standard. While the God's in from Hanukkah is Mahadim, because the whole theme of Hanukkah is this putting yourself aside to- totally. Bittal in, in, in Gansim. 
giving yourself over to Hashem 100%. That also is the Inkum Sir's Nefesh, which is the concept of the self-sacrifice.